gonna I'm gonna read a few poems here, and um, you know it says on the program that I wrote them, which actually isn't true. Um, in fact, it was a pair of camels who were oppressed with consciousness, uh, tortured, you might say, and uh, one of them was called the Noble Dromedary, and uh, the other was called the Ignoble Bactrian, and arguably it's two sides of the same camel, but uh, I, I merely compiled and translated uh, these poems, so sorry for the error in your programs. Um, Not the mic, right? Yeah, you're back. <laughs> Uh, so, I'll just, uh, just get into it. This first one is called Meat Surge. Meat Surge. I repeat, Meat Surge. Meat Surge. Emergency. Red alert. We hover on the brink of insurgency. Cheap meats merge as rich meats cleave and feet dirge in the street, souls raw. We talking thaumaturge or dramaturgy? Hurry, it's a meat mallet orgy. Meat cleats beating down, down. Sidewalk curds concrete verbs. Blurbs murder mutton's bleeding leap motif. To speak hurts. It hurts repeating bleed blood, bleed. See ya, second meat surge, Sarge. Sarge, medic, treat the sergeant's meat before red goes green. Gird your tender loins. Courage! Green beef. Salami samothracy. Fate to complete. Their fleet has turned to flee. Cease fire. Seed power. Scab over scab. Urge teats. Churn cheese curds. Echo drab living off milk and meat. Off repeat. Repeat. But meat surge one means meat surge two. Burning iridenta, meat burnt black, flirt with scourge, flicker, slur, spittle flurry, green sludge, meat slurry, fleas replete with blood and flying fur, spurt, resurgent surfeit, blood like a red bird flits through. Mink pie, duly singed, for brunch and leftovers. Unemployed, apply direct to underarm. But the so-called velveteen strike up a tingle. A hat rack gazes on with lemon scent condescension. Boot brush it off, shave it into grain and static. In a fug of deals cinched and treaties ruptured, fuzz slithers through a hairline door gap. Entropic hegemon, Eyeballed, piebald, blink hoof, wreathed in lashes. Trappers sport mohawks once again. Gazes vacuum a tigress pelt, Siberian. Caressing, was it raspberry tendrilled fungi? Dust hairs snowball down the ramp. Hairballs begin to levitate, to hum. Coat racks, coat rack grants amnesty in order that camel hair arrive as if by way of Finland station. Uproot, like separatist memories we live to plate another day, busting what jars had kept our shrunken heads ingrown. Formaldehyde and jackal on a leash. What with rampant scalping, heirs to the cotton gin pull steel wool down over puppy dog eyes. Time to say goodbye, you bald new world. This next one is called Stink Eye, and uh, appropriately, I have a stink eye. I don't know if anyone in the audience would care to. It's twice fermented. Yeah. I can hold on to it. It's fine. Um, so, Stink Eye. Wearing a police of patches and rings of lather out. Swearing in point shoes. Won't sickle scented handles toad the stool? If Gavel's tulip out of rube contraptions, take special care to waft like so. I too react to modern day mood sprays with stinging pus, but authors, authorities, and musty renegados even heft their ban on sneezing at hagiographies gone rancid. 
scanners snuff for musk perfume, dials akimbo, a needles and pinstripe soupcion threads the brainstem, even as traffic cop come choreographer throws down the thimble, gargling petroleum. Second nature. Fecund session, casebook coups, the silver tasseled one. Pent up zoo keeps picket sides to squabble over who saw who shoot the grizzled macaw. On second thought, why? Down quayside, ballast rising from the steamer's bilge, bears with it a shipping crate, dubbed live animal handled with care, and busted. A snakeskin also for the psychoanalyst to chaw. Carnegie came in first, though genius lives in materials alone. Why care to recoup the memory of passenger pigeons, of skies contused with knockoff fancy hats, fur-lined muffler diagnosed attention deficit, regurgitate the talking cure. Restored from its gilded heyday and refurbished, the passenger train derails, striking with all its mighty coils, scarves and hands flapping from window after window, plumb through an arch of azure tail feathers. Big fan. Figure 2B, catalogs of nascent phlegm fan their glossies in a strange breeze. The new turbine, blades designed to mirror sturgeon fins, spins, becoming a choice subject for photographers and neo-photorealists alike. The yucca was a mainstay fancy flourish in windmill oil portraits. Meantime, the nouveau riche conspire with Art Nouveau to fan the online streaming fireplace. A V of flying fortresses goes rattling overhead. The fanfic fan base claps noise cancelers to their ears. The new zine explodes on social media, with experts blaming Peronista saboteurs and Peronistas blaming amateur pornographers. The riot over foosball continues unabated, coming round the ivory three-speed oscillating tower fan once more. It wasn't long before the new Committee on Moral Turpitude signed Fig Ban into effect. <laughs> Action figure, the catch-all watchword flung in a hoop of spittle. Cues form at ticket booth, retiarius to drive luminous shoals extinct. Just add batteries. Calipigeon wheel well, doctored with pixels, buttered by fans. Scalpel! But I sent the password to a safe house in the foothills. Quaint but well-proportioned kitchenette. Wasn't one to pass the salt, pillar please, but then I saw the splash of plasma stained glass. No crack under interrogation. Brass and silicone match bluster with frustrate, scooping torsos inside out. Butte, the wife, bears talismanic value. Thought to copy, but fashion her myself. It's not a lot, but it is my lot in life. Trying times? Try slathering a dollop on this saltine cracker. Will you just look at the time? Uh, mind giving my chain a tug? I must be getting home. Home run. Roll that mordant pipsqueak die for a last chance, however bantam, to haul your feeble limbs from out the tar pit. Luck enough to start it, go as landed gentry Unlucky landing smack dab on Fukuyama's final form. Land before time, land after time, coal bearing both. Mondo dragonflies go up like Roman candles, like the mortgage clinging to your villa. Deluxe grubs excrete corrosive pawns to trap and predigest the hapless, prey role played by their own paternal forms. Animatronic? Pouches lined with garish dollars already running through your forceps. Currency hard won from peddling grandpap's fossil menagerie to snag a spot at the Grand Abyss RV Resort. Hun Rome, who's the coal now, pitch? 
<laughs> I've got a few uh, place states poems now. So if you recognize, if you've never been there, you know, like, give a without a holler. And, uh, this first one is called Saint Abacus. Mislaid my passport and during unpaid sick leave in Saint Abacus, that last resort bird of unbroken December. Deployed a spate of platitudes, but flubbed the slither out through Doric gendarmerie. So, stuck, stayed put, only to find myself in the employ of a local being magnet, name of Mr. Sweetbeat. Sundown to sun up and then some, hunched over a puddle of lamp piss with a blue number two lodged back of the ear, sorting. Sorting jade, beans, from bone, has been. Sorting halves, owl pellets, from have-nots, knacker, and so on and so forth. An enterprising forebearer had filled my cubby in with a soup of glue and eraser shavings. Oh, but did I forget to mention how Sweetbeat's sweatshop, a palatial affair, was built circa 1825, entirely of ice cream sandwiches, even the triglyphs. Neapolitan walls and set with niches each graced with a perpetual mobile, each clicker set one second behind the last. As if to placate whimsy, all comers crossed our palms with silver, sycophants all, with a sense of mathering girk. Impromptu flag rants made names for this or that unctuous functionary in whippings of spittle and gnashings of gold crown. Borodino or more Borneo? Orangutans and edible nest swiftlets sifted through the antechamber like, I have had, haven't I? I hasn't had. Having hasn't? I'm afraid not, we replied. I'm afraid so. They never stayed for long. Tea served with stale cake. We suffered thus in some, not unlike some Belarusian widow whittled little by little, almost imperceptibly, way down to all but whistle. Gloomville. Do not fail, should you catch the bullet expressed to G, to lodge in your cheeks a shrill whistle, minor key. Deploy it as dust falls for the sake of atmospheric form. A vill, but a vill of none but vile, crusty forms, inhospitable to content. Gravel so Rosicrucian as to set your wisdom teeth on edge. <laughs> Even the cobbles are downright over the top with slime. The nightjar neither cheeps of pickles nor sweetly churs of dill. Squonk of trumpets only, wrung from a gramophone by servile cranking. Such like compote will by no means suffice to bribe the gargoyles of virtue who send you on your gloom and veiled way. Clip clop goes the ingenious encyclopedia. Chip off the old buttress. Assuming place of privilege, a sliver off center, square central. Snuffling, chugging along, it runs, or rather trots, at give or take 10,000 swine power. That's gross, as opposed to real. It's geary viscera truffle out your name, your crimes, your deprivations. Meantime, a hideous movement churns the boulevards, hissing stickily filigreed with jargon. In short, Galicious Mossip. And, uh, wow, out beyond the municipal cones, a Restoration era howitzer belches up Civil War era manure, tracing an arc of impeccable cursive athwart mid ear. Am I doing okay on time? 14. Okay. Rustic Orgy. Unsettling out from administrative centre to campagne. We rode and we rode and rode amongst the aubergines and pâté rangées bumpily on the road of a red hippo enragé. Here, in a bracing stench, prize carbuncles trite, trot tight sweaty rings around the clock yard. Waves of amber ergot sift creakily for miles around. Indoors, mind you, pick up soap suds, play harmonica in departmental argo with shine like lather oozing through the window stains. But still, 
forward density stacks and folds by way of giggles and triplet, of snore or snort recordings to be had for 25 cents a piecemeal down at the local commissary. Vend my enclosed left nostril, paste crystal of my mama's ergs at the permanent Ren Fair, in exchange for a sturdy pair of hod cloppers, you please. Clasp your fiddlestick spittoon, my love, and clasp close my dovetail matador. Surrender? Creme de Tartary thunders back across the step from whence, etc., but swivels in the saddle to twang off a Parthian smokeless spit. Please recite it. And, uh, probably over time, so that's it for now.